doesn't matter at all. But then we have a function, say a function of z, which we are interested. How does the field vary in this only direction where it is allowed to vary? Because in the transverse plane it is constant and uniform, no variation. But in the z plane, because from Helmholtz equation, then we, when we plug this in here, both are ux oriented, that is a constant vector. Let's drop the vector. It means that means that we have a simple differential, second order, ordinary differential equation. The second derivative of function is the same as a constant times this function. Do you agree? Ah. Yes. yes. This one. Yeah. Okay. Yes. That is. Um, uh, I assumed now only the fact that uh, the variation of the field. So the field in a way varies only in one direction and I call this z direction. But then because it is a vector uh, so the vector can point again to any direction. But now I assume it only to be x directive. So for example that direct. That is now you are right. It was not, I didn't derive that. That is an assumption. It could be also y or any, any other or and what I didn't prove that that it would not be z direction. But for this matter, okay, if you insist, let's drop no. it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if it disturbs you, let's drop that. Let's say that it is a constant vector u, and, and we, we, don't, we don't mind what direction it is. Since it is u, then here it is. This is u directed, and this is u directed. But if it's a constant, then this u comes here, u comes here, and it doesn't is not affected by the derivative. We can drop it, so it doesn't matter. The only important thing is this: what is the functional dependence on z? Yeah, you are very. <laughs> I don't get it easy. Yeah, <laughs> right. But then, as you per perhaps know, then this. Um, kind of relation. What is... Yeah, Sami? Yeah, yeah, actually, how about... Well, well, let's give it straight. How about circular polarization? A good point. But, well, we come to that. But circular polarization, again, is a constant polarization. But then, as you remember, we get an ellipse. If there are two, say, 1 plus j2, 2, which are different direct, but that is still a constant constant and still this argument is valid that if we put it constant there it doesn't affect the di di differentiation yeah but that is a good point then all right but then now then perhaps you know the easy solution to a fact that what is the second derivative what is a function whose second derivative is the same as the function itself except to a constant have you an exponential function? Yes, because you know that exponential function is e to the say z now, of course. Its second derivative is first derivative is e to the z, and second is again e to the z. Nearly the same. Oh, but now it is not exactly the same. There is some kind of constant. So, but no problem, let's put, say, a here, because then this is e to the az, and then here comes a squared. Yeah. Oh, let's, let's, let me do like this. Let's call it, yeah, constant, as you said. Let's call it, ah. okay, well, a is as good as any, any other, <laughs> sorry. So it's, of course, e to the az. And then one derivative gives a, a second one gives a squared. But now let's see, 
here it should be this a squared should be minus this one. So the solution is such that a squared is minus omega squared mu epsilon, of course, because here it gives plus a squared, so a squared has to be minus this one so that it would compensate this one. But no problem, you can see that now we get our comp complex things, omega square root mu epsilon, and then j, oh, even plus and minus. Oh, two solutions, of course, second order equation. So it means that our solution is E is has the, our vector. We don't take we don't yet talk about the vector, but anyway. So let let's say one e to the minus j omega square root of mu epsilon z. But then another solution. And of course, any combination of those is also, also valid. e to the plus j omega epsilon z. Okay, or any amplitude, in fact. We can have e1 here, e2 here. Because you know that this is a homogeneous equation. So the amplitude is not fixed. Because if we have one function with a certain amplitude and is valid here, multiplied by 10, it is again valid. So this amplitude is not given by this homogeneous field. Of course, when we look at our antenna, what is the amplitude of antenna? That gives the amplitude of the field. But now we are interested what type of field is, 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 can propagate there, or can exist in this medium. So, now, it looks a bit complicated, but there are like two solutions. Let's study those later. But then, there is an amplitude. This is just gives 10 volts per meter. You know, electric field dimension is volt over meter. Then there is a unit vector. What is that? That gives, as you have been interested, the polarization, the, the how does the vector field, the electric field vector, what, how, what is it directed? Is it like vertically polarized or horizontally polarized or whatever? But, but now we are interested in this functional dependence. How does it depend on z? It depends on z exponentially. But then it depends on the frequency and then these material parameters. But in the free space, okay, this is just a constant again. But let's see, what does it, this mean? Uh, let's now call this thing here, just for shorthand notation, it is k. Yes? Ah, good point. So uh, your question is that, can this be written like this? Yes. Well, this is an important thing because now it depends on the sign of the, of the mu and epsilon if they are complex and so on. Uh, that is a bit ambiguous because, again, square root is, is an ambiguous. It has two solutions, the square root. But our like, uh, uh, ordinary understanding is that if they are positive number, square root of 4, for example, is 2 and not minus 2. So, in, and now let's first talk about positive numbers, then these are totally equal. But then, if you have, a, say, a complex number, then you have, like, two solutions in the complex plane, and, and then you have to just choose the other one. And then that is a very important problem, especially in the metamaterial business, where we are dealing with negative parameters. Yes? Ah? Uh -huh. 